Hello Ducks, the Duck Game here today and this is my second time trying to record this now. I don't know what's wrong, it, it lagged behind the first time when I looked over it and it's really annoying. So here's my second try now. Um, playing as Feyenoord, as you can remember, when I've got to be trying to, you know, do all this stuff where I, best teams in the, in the world, only sign people in my league and that's about it. So what we do in this career mode, the first thing we did was we put a scout in from Scotland to try and find some Swiss players. Then we go ahead and, well now, now we're going to make them try and find the Swiss players. There we go, six months in Switzerland and hopefully this doesn't lag behind this time. Then we get an offer from Coventry there for Grafland, Ronald Grafland. So we decide, you know, we just say yes for Grafland because Grafland can go to Coventry, why not? Eh? It's only a loan offer for Grafland. And then here is me going on to my shortlist here. I'm going to be trying to sign Jetro Willems. I'm going to be trying to sign some other players like Rod Fanny as well. I'm going to be trying to sign some other players as well. Because, you know, you need to sign players. I keep saying others. I'm going for Jetro Willems first, though. I put in a 4.2 million bid plus some other left back in replacement for Jetro Willems. I don't put in Nellum, but instead put in w Windenburg. However, I go back and check if I want to put Nellum in, and then I go and check if there's any worse left backs in Windenburg, which I cannot seem to find. So instead, I just put in Windenburg here and. I got 4.2 million and then I offered Retro Willems a contract. Next up here is Rod Fanny. We put in 1.2 for him and hope to see what we can get from Marcy. Then we go and try and sign Nathaniel Klein and we try 3 million for him because Nathaniel Klein is looking to be quite a good right back. He's quite young and 75 rating. This guy is 17 years old, 64 rating, redevolved, so we decide as well, I'll go for him. That's all the left backs that I wanted to sign, I think. Then we go into the right, no, one more left back, sorry, how could I forget? Benjamin Mendy from Marseille, 19 year old left back, 70 rating. Then we go for Harry Kane here, striker from Spurs, who's doing really well this season. Is a little bit overrated, in my opinion, but... There's nothing you can do about that. You know, he's still doing quite well. He scored one of the top scorers this season. Next up, we go for Emmanuel Mayuka, Mayuka again from Southampton, just like Nathaniel Klein. Because uh, he's really good. He's quite fast. And then the final offer we make is for Ricardo Zivkovic. Only 17 years old, and he's got one of the best potentials. 90-odd potential for this guy. It's going to be incredible. Then Ajax say that we can have Jetro Willems, so I go and try and sign Jetro Willems. And every other person rejects. Uh, and I just leave them all for just now and then see what I can do later on. So after simulating filed a little bit, Spurs to accept my contract for Harry Kane. And so I decide I will try and offer Harry Kane. 5% at 4 years he will be a crucial first team player and having scored about uh, 19 goals this season Hurricane's doing really well. I then put in some transfer funds requests just because I really want more money to be able to send both of them but as you'll see in a little bit it doesn't matter anyway because I will end up getting enough money but will I sign him or not that does remain to be seen. Our final two friends are going to be selling here Kondogba and the other guy, we just went and sold them on. Or we're trying to sell them on. There's a money. Then we go into Shrewsbury Town here. And hopefully we can beat Shrewsbury Town. Who are in yellow and black in this game. We are in the red and white. And let's get this game underway. So in FIFA Duck Stadium here. We're playing against Shrewsbury. And once this animation loads up, we should be able to start seeing what's going to happen. That is Kenneth Vermeer, and this is the first chance it's been given to Kazim Richards. And Kazim Richards almost finds the back of the net, but he just trips up and ends up missing the goal. 
and he also hits it with a tub with his big toe, but that doesn't matter. But then Kazim Richards, once again, he goes in for the header, but just can't quite make it, and it's a good save by the Shrewsbury goalkeeper. I hit into Botis there, and Botis then passes it in, but once again, Kazim Richards, I think it was again, misses the ball, so we're having quite a lot of, you know, chances, we're, we're just missing the ball, you know, we could have had a, one or two goal, really good goal chances, and that was our first one where I think we actually did hit the ball, and really nothing happened in the first half, but in the second half here we run up, and we get a free kick after the first two minutes, and we did, I decided that I, I don't like shooting, so I'll, I'll pass it out to Bytus and see what he can do, and he almost scores, it just goes over the top left and no more. As we can see by this replay, it's really close. It's a lot closer than it looked the first time. And that was that for that highlight. There, I think that should have been a penalty for Kazim Richards, but it just turns out it wasn't. You know, sometimes FIFA does really strange stuff. And we get the ball to Valhalla here after that penalty instant and a very another strange thing there. A really strange save by the keeper, letting Valhalla score one of the easiest goals he'll ever score in his career. I mean, any any goalkeeper should have really should have been able to save that, but somehow they just they couldn't save Valhena shot. Don't know why I was calling him Valhalla there, but it's Valhena, Tony Valhena, and Gazim Richards gets the ball to El Amde for the final shot of the game that we miss. So that was it. This is there's no more highlights. Just us kicking it backwards and forwards, hoping to end the game. <laughs> okay, and with that the game has ended. Almost there we go. The game has ended now at one nil to Feyenoord, and here we are showing that we have just sold Cong Congola. I don't know why I call him Kondogba. Don't ask me why. And then we go, we sign Harry Kane for the team. So that's us now. We've got Jetro Willems and Harry Kane. And really happy for that because Harry Kane is going to go went straight into the first team. But as you can see there, we've, we've only got six other substitutes now that we've sold those two people. We had eight substitutes. We would have had ten at the beginning. We already did have quite a, low, a, a small team. Most of our players are actually over like 25 years of age. So when we signed... When we signed Jetro Williams and Harry Kane, that was really good. We also go in for Benjamin Mendy, another left back, and Nabil Bentaleb here, who is a centre mid. Both of these players are very young. And then we we, we actually go in loan Rodney Cabral for the season. That means that we will still be able to get him back at the end of the season. He's still quite young, so he could develop into quite the good player. But then we do go and give Mendy his, tell him what his wages would be. And then now we go into a game against Elch FC, who are playing in the yellow, the yellow and green, the white and green. We are playing in the black and green. Not the best colours, but either way, we're going to get underway against Elche here. And hopefully, by the way, you like my little editing with the scoreboard, the FIFA 15 final career mode part one at the bottom, the two team logos. And I turned it black in this game because Elche were obviously in white. But the first the first thing that happens here, Harry Kane does a really stupid tackle. <coughs> 11 minutes into his final career, that should have been a red card. But we got really lucky and Harry Kane only got given a yellow card for that tackle. He's wondering, the hell was that a yellow card? That was nothing, but obviously it was. In real life, that could have probably broken the keeper's legs or something. But anyway... Elche get a good chance here, they run up with their player but narrowly miss the goalkeeper's hands so the goalkeeper doesn't end up saving it and it goes out for a goal kick. So nothing ends up happening after that. But El Amade there passes it into Boetius and goal! So Boetius scores in the 30th minute to make it final one Elch nil and he does a really nice dance as well. I'm, I'm going to be calling him Elche, I don't know why I called him Elch but you fire nod one out you now, and I'm I'm actually really liking this final team. Even though you know, I, I, they're not the best team. They've only got like two players over seventy five rating, but that doesn't matter because as long as I can make them a better team, that's all that matters. I said matter twice. Oh well, a a chance just missed there by that 
by Elche as well. And then in the final minutes of the first half, we almost get a, a shot there, but not quite. And we go and throw it in there. And bang, hits off the post. Almost made it 2-0 there by half time, but not quite. So now we're in the second half here, and a goal from Harry Kane makes it 2-0. Doing better against Elche than we did against Shrewsbury Town. Also, Harry Kane decides he wants to kill one of his players just because he feels like it. But yeah, 2-0 against Elche after doing a 1-0 against Shrewsbury Town. I was real surprised, you know. After not doing very well against Shrewsbury Town, I didn't expect to be, be beating Elche at any point in this game. But to be beating them 2-0, I was really happy. Sorry if I am pronouncing Elche wrong. I'm just going to be calling them Elche because that's how it looks. That's how it sounds like to me anyway. And, you know, if it's called Elche, then please correct me. I would like to get corrected because I don't want to be saying it wrong. So anyway, we've got another chance here. We go and tackle this guy and then he goes and, well, a different guy goes and side tackles us and he also gets a yellow card for that. It was, in fact, Ferran Corominas. That gets a yellow card there. So still 2-0 here. We've got about 15 minutes left of the game. And another cross. And a bicycle kick there from Kazim Richards. Almost getting it on target. But not quite. And then we run it, we run to a fake shot here. And another shot from Kazim Richards. Gets saved. And we cross it back into Kazim Richards. And he hits the crossbar so really good chances for Kazim Richards there but nothing happened with any of them now we've got Kazim Richards one on one with the defender he beats the defender but he can't quite outpace him so he cuts back and he passes it to Botius and Botius has a very bad shot and Kazim Richards also has a very bad shot hitting it off the player but that was the end of that game and it stopped quite abruptly there but we put in another bid for Nabil Bentaleb at 1.71 million because Olympic Leon put in a 1.7 million bid for him. So I wanted to beat them and I decided I'd just put in an extra thousand then. 100,000 because why not? As long as that works, it will be perfectly fine. And then we decide I'm going to keep on that other youth player because he's got a potential rating of 86, which would be really good. Benjamin Mendy, the already 70 rating at 19 years old. So we sign him for the club and... That's all. We now go on a match against Oldham for the last of the friendlies. And also friendlies. I don't get why people skip the friendlies. Because friendlies are the best chance to see how good your players are. To see if you do have a good team or not. And people that skip them just have, won't have a, as good of an idea of how good their team is. So they try and upgrade the wrong parts of their team. Unless, you know, obviously you've got like a 52 rated centre-back. And then like a 89 rated rest of team. You know, you obviously do want to change your centre-back. But anyway, our first chance here comes in the sixth minute to Manu, who is a player that we just put on in this game. We had to make a few changes because some of our players were tired from playing against Shrewsbury and Elche. And so that's what happens. And I, I said and quite a lot there, but Oldham Athletic. I really underestimated Oldham in this game. I didn't. I thought Oldham weren't as good as Shrewsbury, so I didn't think they'd get as, as many shots as Shrewsbury, who only ended up getting two shots in that match. But Oldham really did start to threaten us in this game, and... When we run down the wing with Manu here, we I really hoped I'd get that goal there to make us make me feel more comfortable, but I didn't get the goal from Manu there. And then in the 40th minute, Kane again hits off the goalkeeper. The goalkeeper made a few good saves in this game as well. And right here, I was thinking, oh no, I'm screwed, but not quite. He, he hits over the ball. Long range shots seem to be a lot more difficult later on in FIFA. I was scoring them every day when I first got FIFA, but now I've not scored them for like two weeks. But anyway, we finally get a goal here. Harry Kane, a very lucky goal, though. It hits off the post. And it, if you when you look at the replay, it almost hits away from the post. But Harry Kane does a nice sliding celebration this time instead of trying to shoot his teammates. That's what I was trying to do last time because that is my favourite celebration. I used to always do that with Gareth Bale. Don't know why Gareth Bale. I just decided I would do it with him. And anyway, so that's the goal there from Harry Kane. And yeah... So we did beat the Oldham goalkeeper finally after 48 minutes. And in the 55th minute we go with Harry Kane. And that's a very poor shot indeed. Hits it off the ground. But he redeems himself here. He passes it into Manu. Who has a nice touchdown. And gets it into the bottom right corner. Making it final 2. Oldham Athletic nil. 
and after 62 minutes, it didn't look like there was any way back from Oldham Athletic after that. But as you will see in a second, they do have really a really good chance next off after Elvis scores, Elvis Manu, the Dutch guy. So they have they pass it in here to uh, that looks like Pullian. I, I can't really see because the screen's small and I'm trying to communicate. And then oh my god, it was a smashing shot there by their player. And the computer player seems to do really strange celebrations. He just kind of keeps his hand up for ages. And then eventually does a slide, though, which is quite good. But there, it looks like Tidza, or Tilza. If, if you're an Oldham Athletic fan, then you can tell me what his real name is. Unless he just signed for them in this game, like, as in, in FIFA. But that was a nice shot there. That was best shot So in this video, I think, by Tidza. So I'm I'm gonna give the best shot of best goal of the video to him, and then what happens here is we actually get Valhenna injured, which is not good at all, and we end up putting Jetro Williams in left centre mid, and that doesn't really help anything. But Kane then in the 89th minute to secure the win, we scored a goal a deflected off their goalkeeper, and we decide we'll do a Jimmy Bullard celebration. Everybody listens, apart from our number 22, who just is just kind of standing there clapping. And that, that would really put me off if I was, you know, getting told what to do. But that was the last title of the game. Nothing else happened. Stuck really abruptly there again, I know. But thank you for watching anyway. And until next time, goodbye.